Welcome to Mom and Dad Are Fighting, Slate's parenting podcast for Thursday, September 28th, the Stranger Danger edition. I'm Zach Rosen. I make another podcast. It's called The Best Advice Show. And I'm dad to Noah, who's six, and Ami, who's three. We live in Detroit. I'm Jamila Mew, a writer, contributor to Slate's Care and Feeding Parenting column, and mom to Naima, who's 10, and we live in Los Angeles. I'm Elizabeth Newcamp. I write the homeschool and family travel blog, Dutch Dutch Goose. I'm the mom of three littles, Henry, who's 11, Oliver, who's nine, and Teddy, who's six. We live in Tokyo, Japan. Today on the show, Approaching Strangers, an admirable trait in adults, a potentially worrying trait in young kids. We're going to help one parent who doesn't know what to do about a kid who loves approaching random adults. We're also going to catch up on our week in parenting, and if you're in the Slate Plus Club, we're going to be talking about parenting rules that we totally ignore. Here's what you hear if you have Slate Plus. Would you guys ignore a no gift rule, though? I wouldn't, you know, unless I had some sort of special relationship with a child. Like maybe like if my sister said no gifts, I might be like, this is my nephew. I'm buying a gift, you know, but like with somebody else outside the family, I think I would respect that. You know, I think it sucks a little bit. You know, part of the joy of a birthday party is all that stuff you have when you go home. But I wouldn't violate the rule by becoming a slate plus member you'll enjoy a weekly bonus segment and all your beloved slate podcasts without any advertisements it's the ultimate way to enhance your listening experience while also providing vital support to the show you can join slate plus today by visiting slate.com slash mom and dad plus all right we're going to jump into triumphs and fails as soon as we get back from this short break this podcast is brought to you by progressive insurance Let's face it, sometimes multitasking can be overwhelming. Like when your favorite podcast is playing and the person next to you is talking and your car fan is blasting, all while you're trying to find the perfect parking spot. But then again, sometimes multitasking is easy, like quoting with Progressive Insurance. They do the hard work of comparing rates so you can find a great rate that works for you, even if it's not with them. Give their nifty comparison tool a try, and you might just find getting the rate and coverage you deserve is easy. All you need to do is visit Progressive's website to get a quote with all the coverage you want, like comprehensive and collision coverage or personal injury protection. Then you'll see Progressive's direct rate, and their tool will provide options from other companies, all lined up and ready to compare, so it's simple to choose the rate and coverages you like. Press play on comparing auto rates. Quote at Progressive.com to join the over 29 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Wait, are you gaming on a Chromebook? Yep, yeah, it's got a high-res 120 hertz display, plus this killer RGB keyboard. And I can access thousands of games anytime, anywhere. Stop playing. What? Get out of here. Huh? Yeah, I want you to stop playing and get out of here so I can game on that Chromebook. Got it. Go ahead, break it down real Discover the ultimate cloud gaming machine. A new kind of Chromebook. We're back. Jamila, what have you been up to this week? Okay, so I need some advice. Ooh. Uh, You're in the right place. I've mentioned in the past that Naima takes dance. And for, I guess, maybe two years, she did. Now, she did drop out of the last uh, recital that she was supposed to be in because there were two performances going on at once. There was a school dance performance that had like rehearsals three or four days a week. And then there was one for her dance school. And she said, I don't feel like I've mastered the dances at the dance school recital. I'm burnt out. I need a break. So we allowed her to do that. And she didn't go to dance camp this summer. She did other things. And, you know, the time for dance to start back up comes and I go and I buy her dance clothes and we go to the dance store together. And then she tells me she doesn't want to do it anymore. You know, that her father and I Mm. signed her up without asking. You know, she said, you just assumed, you know, like, I feel like dance has ruined my life. I got COVID at dance school. You know, like, it's too stressful. I don't want to do it anymore. So... You know, her dad and I were very disappointed and attempted to make her do it, which she just flat out refused. Um, So we're like, cool, we're not dancing anymore, you know, for now at least. Mm -hmm. She says she wants to sign up and do a sport like some of her friends. You know, her friends are doing sports 
And so there's another girl from her class she's good girlies with, and she plays volleyball at the same rec center where Naima goes to after school. So we're like, great, volleyball's like it Monday or Tuesday and Thursday at six o'clock, right after after school. One of us can pick you up easily, you know, and just stay an hour. Like, it'll be great. So she was not ready to start last week. She said, you know, can I start next week? I'm like, okay. So we get knee pads and arm sleeves and we're ready for volleyball. Last night, I'm out of town for a few days. Um, so she's staying with her father. She sends me a series of text messages and I didn't see them. And then she says, mommy, I changed my mind. I can't do volleyball. I have no practice at all. Please, It'll be so embarrassing. Please, I can't do this. I'm begging you. Please, mommy, listen to me. Mommy, in all caps. And so then she calls me and she's like, I can't do it. I just can't do it. And I'm like, Naima, you're not the only kid. So volleyball's been going on for a few weeks. And I guess the league is about to start, you know, so they'll be okay. competing, you know, but it seems like there's pretty rolling and rolling, you know, like kids have been joining for the past month. And so I said, you're not the only girl there who's never played volleyball before. You know, there'll be other kids who've never played volleyball. And she's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And so she just dug her heels into the ground and, I wasn't able to convince her before we got off the phone last night. So I don't know what her her father's conversation was, you know, or what his plan is for today, because she's supposed to be going to volleyball today. But I really don't know. You know, he said she's go. OK, he just texted me breaking. You know, I said, OK, I said, what's the plan for volleyball today? And he said, yeah, we found a pair of Adidas that fit her well. OK, but what about her refusing to go? <laughs> but what about... <laughs> Her refusing to go. Happening oh. live. And sometimes her dad does have more success with these things than I do. So hoping that she'll just listen to daddy and he's able to work. And see now, look, what about her refusing to go? When did that happen? So she didn't say anything to her dad, who she's staying with. Mm. Yeah, it's she's just coming to you. Right. Is she supposed to go right after school? Uh, she has after school until six. And so she would go from, and, and it's in the same place. Okay. I mean, mm. I think with the volleyball, the thing is, so like the dance is understandable, right? She wants to do something else. It's unfortunate that she didn't tell you that while you were shopping for dance clothes. Like I, I would find that upsetting, <laughs> but it also feels like there. this is one of the things where it's like, they're a child, but also you didn't see us like at the store. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, at no point then, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But I think with volleyball, can't you be like, you know, we signed you up. You don't have to play, but you committed to being part of this team. You have to go and give it a try. No, I, I agree with what you're saying, Elizabeth. I think that it has to be like some tough love here. Like you signed up for this like let's just try this like give give this whatever set you know one one game one week two weeks but like it's really important that you just stick with it because i think you might like it then if you don't like it if you're like humiliated after a couple weeks then we can reevaluate but she's given up before she even gives it a shot what do you think the underlying issue is though could it just be pre you know pre-game jitters which is like very common I think so. You know, she's never played before. And Naima's very, you know, like a lot of kids her age, her biggest fear is being embarrassed in public, you know? And so... Hey, me too. Maybe if everybody had started on the same day and she knew that there were other people, you know, like if she really believed that there were other kids who couldn't play that would be there, you know? But the idea of starting once other folks have been coming week to week. I mean, the fact that that um her dad doesn't know about this it gives me a little bit of hope that she just kind of is shelving her you know her worries and uh is gonna go today but i'm really curious what what's gonna happen because we're, we're, we're a few hours out you got to report back i will but kids are always like way worse for the caregiver that they are the most attached to like i just feel like the kids <laughs> unload because we have this sort of thing happen where like the kids will unload something to me and then i go to jeff right and he's like what <laughs> yeah and i've been stressing about it <laughs> i hate that i'm like can you just please give us the same information you know like she didn't say anything to her dad about not wanting to dance anymore when she was with him you know even then he was the one who registered her like i'm the one who had to hear the like i'm not dancing anymore thing 
It's always on mommy. It's always, always like, ugh. <laughs> What's up with you, Elizabeth? Um, okay, so on the show, we've talked about that show, Old Enough, which is about the Japanese kids yes. going off and doing uh, these very big errands. So like a an Ami is sent out with some money to go buy <laughs> tomatoes and milk and maybe one other thing with just some yen and a bag and off they go. Uh, and the cameras follow them. And it, and it is a reality show. Like it is, it is not, Japan is not full of little three-year-olds running. And there's lots of cameras on the kids. So, I mean, they are being monitored. Like sometimes they zoom out, you can see the camera team and it's massive. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they're not like alone, alone, but, um, Teddy has been really insistent that his friends run errands. Uh, Henry also is like, well, I can just go get it. Like, my friends just go to the grocery store, go do these things. So we had been letting them just walk to the bakery, which is great. And Mm -hmm. the safety net is so nice that, like, if they make a a mistake to get to the grocery store, there's a couple uh, street crossings. And the kids have said, like, the the parents just sort of make sure other people on the street just kind of make sure that they're waiting and that they're they don't take off and the kid the little kids all raise their hands when they cross the street here so it's like just very well set up for them to do this we then though had been invited out for dinner and we still don't have like a babysitter here and henry was like well my friends get to watch their siblings can i just watch them we were going very close to to where we live and so we were like Okay, maybe this will maybe this will be okay. I've always been kind of hesitant to leave Henry with his brothers just because of course he has the the panda stuff which currently is doing okay, you know, but if he gets upset it seems like where with other children he might have patience with where his brothers, you know, um there's just more problems. But we decided we would leave them and that we would pay all three of them to babysit. Uh cuz their main motivation was like, well think of the money you'll save. <laughs> Uh, So we decided we'd pay Henry a little bit extra because he was in charge of safety, but that we would pay all of the children essentially to babysit themselves. So as long as if their jobs were done and they were in bed, they would get paid after, you know, leaving them for the evening. And we didn't go out till like 730. So eating was done, cooking was done, all of those things. And you guys, it went so well. I was able to Aww. check in with them. Um, and I've been waiting know, they, for the, the other house, shoe to like, drop for this whole story. Thank I'm, yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. So it was, it was it was so lovely. And Henry even Good. sent me this message that was like, I hope you're having, you know, <laughs> a great night. We're all <laughs> fine here. And in the back, he sent That's me a little voice so memo. Good. In the back, the other two are like, we're doing great. We're putting ourselves oh, to bed. So it was, it was oh, really nice. Man. They were like, enjoy your night out. And we got home and they had even done the dishes. So I wow. feel this sense of just like the independence that they're getting in other places is kind of trickling over and it's it's really nice. You know, I'm not sure I would leave them if we were going farther afield, but mm-hmm. um certainly in our little area it seems like this can kind of be our new normal. What um first of all, what a milestone and also like what an empowering evening. That's I such know. a big deal. That's huge. It was really nice. Good job. <laughs> And and this idea of paying all three of the kids, I think you're onto something very big here. That's a really good idea. Yeah, it's very clever. It just seems like the power dynamic is the pro- you know, like if I only pay Henry, then he is somehow in charge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to leaving and being like, listen, he's only in charge if there's an emergency, and the only That's reason right. he's in charge in, in an emergency is because he's had he has more life, right? He has a better mm-hmm. sense of what to do because he's been on the planet longer. Um, but I think it. Worked really well. And now they have, you know, some pocket change to spend on their own when they walk <laughs> to the bakery. Congrats. Um, awesome. Zach, how's your week? My week's going okay, but I have a big F. Oh, no. Um, this is my, it's my classic F, my recurring F that I haven't reported for for a long time because I think I'd, I thought that I had been getting better. But, of course, we, we have emotional uh, relapses. It's the morning. Sheer leaves... Every day before, pretty much before the kids wake up, she has to be at work early. So I'm, I'm always on morning duty, and uh, typically I give the kids a little TV while they eat breakfast, so I can, you know, get the stuff together. And uh, Ami lately has been like pretty good at giving up the TV, but the other day 
I gave, I, I know now that, you know, you have to give them warnings. You know, you have 10 minutes, you have five minutes, you have three minutes. You have, I give a lot of warnings. Like, you know, <laughs> TV time's almost up, bro. Um, gave him all the warnings. Despite that, you know, I'm, I'm telling Ami, um, it's time to go. We got to get in the car. He's not turning the TV off. So I go and pull it out of his hands and he throws his waffle. And we do, I just don't like, I don't like when we throw food in the house. It's not something that they've done. This isn't a trend. It, it really caught me off guard. I was like, whoa, this is, I, 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 it fired me up in the moment. So I picked him up and I'm like, Ami, that is not right. That is not right. And I think, it, I think I'm think i conveying the harshness accurately. You can ask Noah because she was there. Um, but it, it made him really upset. He started crying, you know, like I, I just pick him up and take him into the car and strap him in. Um, and then on the way to school, we drop Noah off first. She proceeds to lecture me for the next five minutes. Dad, did, do you think you needed to speak to him like that? If someone spoke to you like that, how would that make you feel? Um, you know, you're so much bigger than him. And, and if someone was mean to you, you're saying you would be hurt. Imagine what it's like for him. He's so he's so little. And I felt like she was making some really good points. And I was ashamed because I could have just like taken a breath before I like picked him up kind of violently and said, that is not right. And uh, I think like, I think she was right. Like, I, I, it, she's like, D- do you think that helped the situation to, you know, to, to react like that? Mm. Um, so I was very proud of her for clocking that, for advocating for him. And I sat there acknowledging that I had messed up and feeling like some deep shame. Ami forgave me. But, uh, you know, it's just it's just another reminder. Like, my anger is never completely fixed. I haven't, like, arrived entirely on, on Zen Mountain. I'm always going to gonna fuck up, which I did. Um, and I felt bad about it. And uh, I am glad to report today he gave up the TV. Everything went well, which it usually does. But um, I really have that that one recent morning in mind moving forward how did you talk to ami about what happened i said i you know ami we it's a privilege to have tv in the morning i give it to you because i think it helps you start the day off better um but when you don't listen when you don't listen to the warnings it's 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 really frustrating because we have to get to school and i you know he's three so i think he's starting to understand cause and effect like that but that's not how i spoke to him in the moment that was you know on the way to school later that I was trying to like talk it out with him. But in the moment I was just harsh and short. Can you bring Noah onto the team uh, with, to like help with some of this? Cause if he doesn't do it, is there a way to say like, Noah, do you have any ideas on how we could, uh, mm, I like that. You know, I'll try that. Yeah. Help Ami. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. Cause I'm sure she does. And thanks for letting me get that off my chest. It's okay too. You're allowed to make mistakes. We all do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, on that note, we're going to take another quick break. See you back here for our question. Critics are calling the creator a masterpiece. Joshua, take care of it. I promise. It's the best film of the year. Phenomenal. The best sci-fi film in ages. They're coming to get me. I'm getting you out of this. The creator is breathtaking in scale and vision. It's mesmerizing, visually stunning. See this film on the biggest screen possible. The Creator, Rated PG-13, may be inappropriate for children under 13. Only in theaters Friday. Get tickets now. We're back. Let's hear today's question, which was actually originally submitted on our parenting group. If you want to join that group, just search for Slate Parenting on Facebook. It's a super robust community. You are welcome to join us. Okay, here's the question. My four-year-old son knows no stranger. He will randomly grab a hand, lean on a body, or climb on the person. Usually it's a friend's dad or someone he's seen at church. Not people he knows well, but at least seen before. Today he was in a petting zoo area, and I looked over to see him leaning on, talking closely with the guy who runs it. The guy was talking back to him while lightly stroking my son's back. I saw it and immediately told TJ to come out and to me. We have told him ad nauseum not to do this stuff. Any ideas what to say or do? Also, I'm a bit creeped out by the zoo guy touching my kid's back. Am I being paranoid? 
Now, you're not being paranoid at all. And the zoo guy definitely crossed the boundary by touching your child in that way. It's not a traditional and appropriate touch, but we just don't put our hands on other people's kids, you know, unless you absolutely have to. But I think in terms of talking to your little one, it's time to talk about stranger danger. You know, this is one of the most difficult things we have to tell our children um, that not everybody is good. You know, that there are people out there who don't have your best intentions in mind. And, you know, they may want to take you from us. They may want to hurt you. And you have to, you know, exercise judgment, deciding who you talk to. And in general, the rule, you know, at this point in your life is that you don't talk to anyone unless your parents say it's okay. Um, But I think letting him know, you know, there are bad people out here is important. You know, it's not something that's easy for children to understand, but it's something that they need to know. And you don't want him to assume the worst of most people. You know, most people are not bad. Most people are fine. But there are those people out there that intend to do you harm. And so the best way to protect yourself is not to talk to strangers. You know, if we start a conversation together with someone in the grocery store, that's one thing. If you say, mommy, I want to talk to this person or can I ask this, you know, tour guide at the zoo a question, that's fine. But let it be something that we do together. And it also, you have to let him know that people shouldn't be touching him. Strangers should not be putting their hands on him. Yeah, I'm I'm more concerned about the touching than I am about talking to strangers. Like in general, I think someone talking to adults and and generally engaging with them is probably fine. Four is kind of hard for them to understand the dangers of the world, which is why I think we've taken to this like talk about stranger danger. We talk to our kids about tricky adults, like having them just yeah. question what an adult would need from a child. Um, and so like, it's okay to engage with them, but like, why would an adult want to know information about a child? Like based on what you know about adults, do they seem <laughs> in general, like the ones you know, aren't typically that interested in what children are doing unless that is like their job or they are close to you, right? So why would they need your help with something? Why would they need to know this? Like asking them those questions. I agree though, that the touching, like you need to just say, adults are not, are not to be touching you. Like that is a behavior of a tricky adult, right? Like touch is something that is built on trust. And this is why if you are uncomfortable as the parent, it is okay then to approach and change the child's behavior. But I think that if you are having a lot of trouble with this, you just have to be like closer to them and helping them monitor this stuff until they are capable of doing it themselves. Um, And you just need to ask yourself, like, I think if you're worried that you're being overly restrictive, then you can just each time that, that you have that feeling, check in with yourself and say, you know, like, am I overreacting? Something like, hey, this kid is, you know, being his back is being stroked by this man in the petting zoo. Like, definitely... <laughs> that it is okay. And you should feel like, well, this is weird. And we should, (laughs) you need to come back to me. Um, You know, but I think you can say like, we can't go to the petting zoo today, because I need to be able to go in with you. Or we can't go here because I need to be able to to be with you because you're having trouble with this. I do want to mention, again, we are not doctors, but there is something called the disinhibited social engagement disorder, which if you're really worried about it, this is something in which like a kid knows no stranger. I do not think that your child has this because it typically comes with a kid that hasn't properly attached to their caregivers. But there are some disorders that can lead to a child not knowing stranger from from a relationship that they are attached to. And if you feel like th- that your child just really can't figure out what a stranger is, I think it is worth bringing that up to your doctor, perhaps getting some kind of evaluation. If you're just finding that, hey, we're like going over this and their kids their age are sort of getting it and my kid is not, it's possible that they just can't figure out what a stranger is and you may need some additional support. Just want to put yeah. that out there. Hmm. I want to bring in a couple comments from our Facebook group. Marnie says this, I know some people don't like the idea of putting little kids on a leash, but I think it's genius and saves lives 
every time I see a kid in one of those little harnesses with a leash, I think that is a kid who can have some freedom of movement, but will still be safe from dashing in front of a car or wandering too far off in a crowd or a moment of inattention. If a kid isn't yet able to follow safety instructions, it can help keep them safe. What do you think about leashing kids? I'm pro leash. I was a leasher. I think I started when she was around three and maybe did it for about a year, but it was incredibly helpful. You know, huh. she um she didn't mind it. She had a cute little backpack with a teddy bear attached to it, you know, that attached to a strap that went around my wrist. And it definitely kept her safe on a number of occasions. Um, one more person who came to this uh, scenario kind of on the opposite side of the worry spectrum. This is Ashley who writes, there's a lot of anxiety in these comments and I get why social media and 24 hour news tells us our children are always one step from being snatched or abused. But the fact is stranger danger is not the risk it's made out to be. Let grow is an organization that champions child independence and combats unneeded anxiety. They put it best when today's parents were growing up, stranger danger was all the rage. Turns out though, we were doing kids a real disservice telling children that every stranger was dangerous, kept them from seeking out, help when they needed it. So some myth busting there. Interesting. Yeah, I I think I sort of subscribe to that theory that we just need to be like a little careful when we talk about stranger danger and passing on that anxiety. That's, but again, in, in this people. case, I, I feel like <laughs> seeing someone else rubbing your child's back <laughs> that you don't know yeah. is like yeah. you that is that is the kind of stranger danger that we want them to to flee from. I also yeah. thought Danielle suggested a couple books. I always love a good book, but she said, um, Berenstein Bears Learn About Strangers, which I remember reading well, as no. a child, and Stranger Safety were some good books we read around this age that tremendously helped her. They weren't overly scary, but really good points are brought up. And I always think books are a good way to bring this stuff up, even if yeah. the message in the book is not exactly what you want to teach. I, I think it's nice to have a, a conversation. Well, thanks to everyone who weighed in. If you want to join the parenting group, just search for Slate Parenting on Facebook. And you can always reach us directly at momanddad at slate.com or by calling 646-357-9318. And that's our show. Please subscribe, leave a rating and review, and tell your friends. This episode of Mom and Dad Are Fighting is produced by Rosemary Belson and Maura Curry. Shasha Leonard is the voice of our listeners. Alicia Montgomery is the VP of Slate Audio. For Elizabeth Newcamp and Jamila Lemieux, I'm Zach Rosen. Thanks for listening.